and I want you to get my reward. At least a good part of my reward. <laughs> Come for all things are now ready. What will your response be to his invitation? I'm not talking about 10 years ago when you were baptized, 20 years ago, if you were born in the thing. No, I'm talking about today. What is your response today when he says, come, I call you because I died for you. Come because it's now time. Come because all things are now ready. The time is right. And so he calls you. He calls the young. He calls the old. So the appeal is this for you. You've already made that decision to follow Christ. It's simple. You made that decision, but you've kind of been sidetracked by life. Life has bumped you the wrong way. And you kind of went along with the bump. It's probably gotten you off the ball, off the tracks. But you want to say to God, I will get back on track by your grace. I want to be back on track. Bring me back on track. Then raise your hands. If that's your desire, that's the first one. You've been on, on the track, but you've been bumped off the track. Angels saw this. They write it down. That's your commitment today. That's your response to his invitation. And the next is this. I don't know none of y'all. Well, that may be a good thing. But God knows you. He says, I've been calling you for a long time, but you've been rejecting me. You've been sitting quiet. You've been hiding in the dark, hiding behind the benches, hiding behind the elder and such and such. You've been hiding in your church attendance. You're just coming. OK. You haven't given your life to Christ yet. You can't accept heaven without giving your life to Christ. People want heaven, but they don't want to do what Jesus says. You know, you've got to believe in the baptized and so forth. Right? But you've been hiding. You haven't made that choice yet. Jesus says to you, come today. How about taking that walk for him? Walk right up front. You know, it's funny. Some of us say that can't, we can't, we can't never do that. We can't do that for Christ. But imagine that long walk he took with that cross on his back. They stripped him naked. You ever remember? You ever think of that? You ever remember that stuff? Put that in your mind's eye as you say, all right, will I do for Christ what he wants me to do? Or will I reject him? You know, with every single decision to put off, you put off Christ, the devil gets a little tighter on your hold. He holds you a little tighter. Because God says, compel them. He doesn't say ground them into the truth. No. He says compel them to come. Work with them. You are that soul and you're rejecting Christ. Stop rejecting him. Come now. Take that walk. Accept his life. Accept his salvation. Accept what he's offering. Everything else will rust away. Everything else will burn in the end. But he will keep you to all eternity. If you know you need to make a decision for Christ, why wait till next week? Nobody guaranteed you tomorrow. They certainly didn't guarantee you next week. We are living by grace. Why not take hold of the best opportunity you have today to be baptized? Is there anyone like that today? If there is, then take a stand for Christ. Wouldn't you rather take a stand and a walk for Christ than <laughs> take a stand for the devil? Is there anyone here like that today? You've been coming to church, maybe on and off before, for a good while, religiously, but you've never made that decision. You may think that because you're born into Adventism, you are set. <laughs> There's no guarantee to church membership in the courts of heaven. You have to be baptized into Christ, physically and spiritually. If that's what you need to do, be bold for Christ's sake. Take the step that he wants you to take. He says, come. Young man, old man, young woman, old woman. He says, come. Now is the time. All things are now ready. There are some people who, you see them struggle. And they struggle. And you can almost watch the ballot sometimes. And you watch the ballot. And you decide who wins. You may not even feel the battle, but the battle rages if you know that's you, and you never make that decision. It's the Sabbath. You got nowhere to go. Unless you got to go, then maybe you should go. But 
for those who have never given their life to Christ, no other decision will be more important than this one. Now is the time. You can make this decision another time if you're living. If you even feel compelled to do so. I remember when I used to fight that feeling. Fight the fight. It wasn't even a feeling. It was just like moving. It's like, okay. And finally, I gave in. I said, all right, you know, something, whatever. I'll do it. Because sometimes you fight, but you're fighting the wrong guy. You're fighting the wrong guy. You're fighting God. One preacher says, you can't fight with God. The arms are too short. He'll box you too bad. You, you can't fight God, but you fight him anyway. It's a useless battle because what ends is death. Just accept him and he'll give you life. You try, ever seen a boxer who's real tall? And you're real short and you want to try to fight that tall guy? You can't reach him. Don't fight God. It's useless. You're beating air. Just grab hold of his hand. That's what he wants. He says, come, he'll take your hand. There's none here, and I am assuming all are saved in the kingdom of God. All have accepted Christ as their savior. If that's the case, then so be it. Lord, if not, hold on to that soul. Give them another chance. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your call to come for all things are now ready. We thank you for being a merciful God, even though we were we are disobedient with the breath you've lent us, with the spirit, the breath of life that we borrow from day to day. We thank you for being a kind, compassionate God, even though we don't deserve it. You saw those hands that were raised for their recommitments to you. We all raise our hands if we've already given you our, our, our lives. And we want to get back on track, Lord. We want to be what you want us to be. We want to do and live the way you want us to live. We ask that you forgive us, cleanse us from all our sins and our righteousness. May the blood of Christ wash us so that you can accept us as if we've never sinned and accept us into your kingdom. We want heaven. We want eternity with you. We want the best that you have to offer. So Lord, cleanse us of every sin. Wash us of our, our rebellion. Remove every sin from us that impedes us from accepting and taking hold of that gift. And for those who have never made their decision and are struggling, Lord, give them the strength to hold on to you another time for a little bit longer. Don't let your hands slip with them in it as they make that decision to hold on. But give them, compel them in whatever way possible, Lord, that they may be saved, that they may feast when you return with you in the kingdom. There is still room, dear God, for many others who are not here. We ask that you would reach them through us when possible and when necessary. When we have the opportunity, use us to be a light in this dark world so that all our church going and reading of scripture and all our praying, it won't be for nothing. Well, that your love may shine through every single one of us and we too may be able to enjoy eternity with you. May all things in this world begin to pale as we see that it will burn. The burning time is coming and eternity is also coming. Help us to choose eternity with you. May all our names, Father, remain in the book of life. Write it in there if it's not in there. May we continue to enjoy your goodness and your mercies from day to day. Bless us as we stand. Bless us as we walk here and to and in this planet. Bless us as we go about our daily business. May your spirit be in us and your light shine through us so that others may come and take their seat, their spot in your great, great supper. We thank you for dying for us. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Please. Save us, we pray. We thank you for your love. We thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen.